award-winning film Paint is a dark comedic journey about young New York City artists as they struggle to sell their first paintings. It's really about that coming of age <laughs> story, but it's through the artists, and it it is funny, and it's all it's it's it has every emotion in it. Like that's what yeah. I think about like comedy. You can't have comedy without the drama and the the angst and the you know, and it's just that whole you know that whole journey of artistic integrity, especially when you're young and beginning is so hard, that balance between it all. And um, just this, this movie, you got to see it. It's coming out December 15th and it'll be out everywhere on a VOD. So go get it. iTunes, all those places. I uh, go to pangofilms.com. You'll be able to learn more there, but we're excited to have the filmmaker, Michael Walker join us today. So Michael, how are you doing? I'm well, how are you? Oh, you doing good. Right? good. Yeah, yeah, we can. Like seriously, okay, that we love that movie, and I know it started it. as a pilot. Okay, that was a great as, introduction. Thank you. Oh, you bet, man. We watched it, it last night. I'm like, it, it should be a series. Really I love it as a film, but, but those characters are still yeah. living with us. Yeah, they're yeah. they're with well, you us. You know, you know. I don't know if you know this, but it started as a series. It was going to be a a TV series, and I filmed the pilot for it, which played mm-hmm. at Sundance, and. uh but, you know, in the end, I don't know, TV is a very strange uh, world is trying to get mm-hmm. things picked up. And, and so we never we never managed to sell it. But, uh, you know, but I didn't want to let those characters go. So I just I sort of converted the rest of the season into a movie. I added some other oh. things, too. So it's not, it wasn't quite that simple. But. No, Wait, I bet not. I mean, this out. oh, man. I know. I, I just I do. <laughs> I, but I love it because that whole thing about the, you know, there's the romantic thing of being the artist and then just, mm. and Nancy is a wildlife artist and um, okay. and we both got the giggles mm. and I, I mean, I've been selling our art since I was a little kid and now, you know, we're in the yeah. magazine thing where, we're, you know, photography, filmmaking, all yeah. of it. And there's that whole, there's always that balance of selling out, like. You know, mm-hmm. and, and I think you had a really good, like that one dude, Austin, like, I'm like, dude, come on. <laughs> You're one of those. He's well, you know, I don't think like, Austin sold out. I think that's just his character is that he, yeah. you know, that yeah. he's, he's one of those people that's, you know, he, he didn't have the integrity or whatever it was. He, he just does his work as a little shallow. That's and, and it's just fine, you know, I think. And, and, you know, I'm a little older now, so I have a little bit more. I don't know, less, less, a little less judge, judgmental than I would have been. Yeah. Well, but, yeah, he didn't sound but I remember what it was I like to be that. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not yeah, it's out so of, hard. It's, you do have yeah. to have that business side, and Nancy always says that. Like, it's, you, it's so hard. Yeah, yeah, you have to have the business side. You can't, mm-hmm. like, like, I'd love to not be on social media 100%, but if I didn't do it I wouldn't have a business like we're forced into yeah, it you true. have to spend that time you know that same yeah thing and anything in creativity doesn't mean you you like every author we interview will sit there and say oh the writing is you know blood sweat and tears but the worst part is now I have to go out and market the thing mm-hmm. <laughs> you know it's, yeah, the hard and part. it's true as artists are sort of insecure people generally. I mean, not, all, yeah. not always, but, you know, but they're, and they're not always good at selling themselves. And it's, it's hard to sell yourself, it's, you know, and at some point you have to sort of figure out maybe how to separate your art from, from yourself from so yourself. that you can sell it yeah. or something like that. But, you know, when, you, when you're starting out, like you said, and you, you have these oh. ideas of integrity and, uh, and the world just seems like <laughs> it's built out all around you and it's really tough to navigate that. So well, you know, these characters are doing it. I think Van Gogh cut off his ears so he didn't have to listen to people's criticism anymore. I've always thought yeah. that. <laughs> I was like, okay, enough. Yeah. I'm cutting my ear off. You know, cause... That's, yeah, that's another thing. I don't even think I – I didn't want to talk too much about the actual art. So, you know, I didn't get too mm. much into, like, people saying, like, oh, my God, that's awful. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And the criticism uh, of it. Yeah, it's true. You, you know, you have, to, you have to have a certain amount of tough skin for it. So. Well, what I really loved about paint – and it's something I know we're going to air Steve Steiker's Hollywood history segment after you. And um, he's been on our show for years doing like looking at, you know, film and, you know, what's made mm-hmm. in classics. And we, he did a segment on British filmmakers and British film. Mm-hmm. And we always wonder why is it about, you know, British comedy and British, you know, that we're so attached to, and it's the characters, the character driven, mm-hmm. you know, format. And I think that's what I really, really appreciated about your movie is that whole character driven all their their mm-hmm. their their highs their lows their 
their beauties, their their not so beautiful things. I mean, everything. I mean, it's it's so real, and I I really appreciate that because I don't think we see as much of that in American. Well, we're getting there through all the Netflix stuff now. But yeah, I, I feel I, like yeah, we I, I mean, I agree. I mean, there's, yeah, there's there's definitely that. There's two types of. Well, I mean, I don't know, there's probably a million types of comedy, but there's the type of comedy which is very big and broad, and you know, and, and then there's a very you know, this more realistic sort of comedy that you're talking about, which I guess you know, yeah, it is more a little more British. It's and it's a little more bit more. Personal. I mean, I don't know, dark, I guess. The British sense of humor is a little darker than American sense of humor. I actually, mm-hmm. I went to high school in England, so. Oh, oh there you go. Have, oh. See, there it is. <laughs> so I, I, did have, school, I, I did have a little bit of that sense of humor, and it hasn't yeah. served me well, particularly in America. It's selling comedy. Yeah. But. Cool. I went to school in the 80s in England. After living in Kenya, I went to what, kindergarten in Kenya, and then went in a, and then a, I got put in a, I was going to say a nunnery. What do you call them? Convent. <laughs> After I got kicked out of one school, and anyway, long story, and then ended up in England. And no, then uh-huh. no, <laughs> it was funny. But Where was it, that? This was a that was, we were up in the north. We were we went um, Southport and Preston, so we were in the north. So don't laugh at us because everyone laughs at us because we were in the Lancashire. north. Lancashire. Lancashire area, uh-huh. yeah. And we went, uh, and it was, was the height of, of oh, well. Doggy Dog. Doggy Dog. <laughs> we, it was the height of the punk era, and going from Kenya and li- and actually living part of my life in the bush with different tribes, I was like, look at all these white people trying to be, you know, tribal African. I can imagine, crazy. I can imagine. It was crazy. That's but... when I was there, too. It was the early 80s, and I was I came from Miami Beach, and I went over there, and, oh, my you know, God. and it wasn't the England it was now. It was a little bit more like the third world, I think, but. Yeah, it was, it, was, like it, was, it was still like it was still like recovering from the World War Two. I felt like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and all the and, and brutalism, architecture everywhere. Like it was cool. Like you know, the the epitome of fun at that point would be like you're kicking cans in the street. Like you know, I don't know. It was that's kind of well, how I'm the sure up north up north was rough up there. It was up north. Yeah. Was, you know, up, yeah. That's was, what we did. It, it was it was it's fun. It's, 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 uh, in the meeting of life, right? And they go up to. So at, the, at the beginning, they go up to, they said, the, the third world or Lancashire or something like that. They have that big thing at the beginning. But they, <laughs> hey, we got, we have got good cheese and hot pot, but, you know, it's all, it, but there is something, I think that when you go in the British side, like you have, your character is what gets you by. You have to get through cold, you have to get through all of that. And it's like, and England's lovely, by the way, everybody, we do love England. Um, they have some of the oh, best yeah. licorice and candy in the world. But, um <laughs> When you look at, I know, the important things in life, but going Mm -hmm. back to pain, like the characters to me are really cool because there's also the insecurity. You know, I I looked at Kelsey, you know, here she is. Yeah. And she has to deal with this art dealer who you, I'm sorry, I wanted to smack him, but then he was like nicer. It was like this back and forth. Mm -hmm. And you know how the the art gallery world, and I think this is why we have so many cooperative galleries now, is how going into a gallery and it's this Mm -hmm. Uh, the, the whole gallery, and even when I was watching the whole thing of here's the gallery mm-hmm. opening and the Lottie Dawes and the the hoity toities and then the not hoity toities, and then it's like, mm-hmm. oh, I'm trying to look cool. Like there's that whole yeah. mixture of people that go to those openings, uh, and to get in a gallery yeah. and then they take half your money. <laughs> well, more, <laughs> than <laughs> more than half. More than half. Yeah, they. Uh... And, and, you know, it's a, it's a it's a very uh, critical world, a re- judgmental world. The, and then, you know, especially at the sort of higher end of that, and Kelsey's as insecure as they come. And also, Kelsey doesn't come from, you know, like a privileged background, I don't think. I think she's, you know, mm-hmm. she's she comes from, uh, she's bridge and tunnel, as they say in New York. Mm-hmm. She's, uh, but she went to art school, and she has some real ideas about things. And, and for her to go into this highbrow world is kind of, a, you know, it's, it's, she's ambitious, but it's, it's, it's tough for her. It's so soul destroying when you put your I mean you paint what you're painting or you sculpt what you're sculpting or you you do you write music and then you put it out there which takes some bravery mm-hmm. and I don't think anybody unless if it especially the first time you're not prepared I don't know what could prepare you for <laughs> the onslaught of oh that's really good oh well you need to the the advice of people who yeah. don't paint, who don't play an well, instrument, who don't sing, the advice is is out. 
I don't yeah. know. Well, it's, it's, yeah. and it's also they're coming out of school, you know, where mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's, yeah. it's, they all met at art school, and art school is a very safe place where you yeah. learn very, you know, idealistic ideas, and uh, mm-hmm. and then you go to you know the world, and the world just really doesn't care at all. <laughs> like holy shit, I <laughs> <Matt. laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you know, it was interesting. Nancy Nancy had this artist that she looked up to in her wildlife art, and you oh, know, yeah. she told me about him oh. all the time. I don't even want. I don't even know if you want to even say his name now. But no. there's the same thing about Kelsey. Here she has this guy. I don't want to give the story away, so just tell me to stop at any point because I don't want to give it away. No. But like here okay. she is. She meets her hero in art, and then oh. he like he he, he he he. It wasn't good, and and then at the same time it was good. Okay, so everybody has to watch the story for that. But it was <laughs> there was this this euphoria turned into the yeah, here it is you know, smack. Oh. And Nancy finally met her hero and it was the, sa- it, she didn't, the same. She didn't, she didn't do the nasty painting. with him, but <laughs> he, no, no, not at all. They put my paintings next to his. And so oh, we right. end up at the, at the opening of the art show and I'm all like, mm-hmm. Oh, I'm so thrilled. And then I met him. And like, <laughs> move my and he wasn't happy about that. I guess. No, no, it wasn't that. He just he was he's older than I was at the time. I was younger, obviously. And he looked at me and he was British and he said he said, Oh, you know, given a few more years you might have a painting. And my <laughs> response was go F yourself. I was <laughs> oh, thank you, so Nancy. Mad. <laughs> thank I was you. so mad because I thought, you know, even even today, as I think about it, as an older person, you, as an artist, you could try to inspire a younger one, not yeah. cut them off of the knees, you know? And then yeah. I thought later, then I thought later, oh, you're scared. You're scared of me. <laughs> so I uh-huh. thought, oh, yeah, watch this, you know? So I didn't give yeah. up, but it, it stuck in my mind of you look at a painting or a sculpture and you love the work. Or you mm-hmm. see something that you like, and somehow you decide the person who did it is nice, and they may be, but they may not be. <laughs> yeah, or whether whether they're nice or not, you know, something they emot- there's some sort of emotional connection you feel with them, and then yeah, you know, whatever and, they have a million reasons that you know they have their own lives that they're going through too. So who knows? Maybe and, he was just having a bad day. Uh, you know? I, I oh, wish I never met him. You oh, know, see, he was yeah. my yeah. idol. I wish I never met him. See what you've done in this movie. Listen, you even got the dogs all yeah. riled up, Nancy. Now, see, see what happens. <laughs> see what happens. But, <laughs> you, but the, the interesting too with her. Then you've got Dan, who I mean, he's like the main. You know, I think Dan and Kelsey there. The two and Quinn. Quinn, yeah. like I, mm-hmm. I have friends Character like Quinn. I yeah. Yeah, I, yeah I, well, I have friends I, like Quinn too. A lot of them. <laughs> And I don't know, they're my favorite people, but I no, I I, I no naughty new news with them because I knew better. <laughs> but but um, yeah. Dan, Dan and Quinn, this is the other thing because it's it's what I like I said it's like this coming of age story, but it's it's through the lens of an artist, um, mm-hmm. which is interesting mm-hmm. because you're also going through that um, the the family relationship that Dan has with his mom right. and his dad, and especially his mom mm-hmm. and then his friends. So there's that part too of there is this thing about when you go to school or college, whenever either one of them, then you graduate and then adulthood hits. And then your relationships that you think you're going to be best friends for the rest of your life. And sometimes it happens. I think it's going to be like yeah. a 10 to 20% that you're really connected for the rest <laughs> of your life. I went to 16 schools mm. and I'm friends with my, my, <laughs> you know, graduating high school and we're, we're still there, but I'm not there mm-hmm. with them, you know, physically they're in Africa right. but when you yeah, look well, at Facebook that, helps with that right yeah it does and but yeah I know I know what you mean like you know Quinn now. is Quinn is somebody yeah. who's you know everyone thinks is the most talented and he's the coolest and uh you know everyone thinks he's going to be great and but then he really doesn't know how to live his life or keep his get his life together and mm. you know he, he has ideals that keep him sort of a bohemian spirit of some sort but it's really uh you know he's he can't pay the rent and he's and he mm-hmm. because he doesn't take showers and stuff nobody really wants that these days in the art <laughs> world it's not it's not the romantic idea that he thinks it is and maybe he doesn't care but 
you know, in 10 years, it's not going to be him. It's going to be Kelsey that's going to have a painting in bigger galleries because she has a different kind of work ethic. Yeah. And yeah. the Dare to Dream part was really interesting. The whole thing of, like, he wanted to go down the drug pathway, you know, and it's interesting because mm-hmm. that's a whole other thing that artists go through of – um you know, you think about the Beatles and LSD and mm-hmm. mind expansion mm-hmm. through weed and, mm-hmm. you know, and, and psychedelics. And there's still this argument of it where people will argue for it and the other side will argue against it. There's this whole balance. So you bring that in, too. And he didn't have. Well, I don't want to give it away. But anyhow, but it, it did. Well, that was the whole pitch. That was the pitch for the TV show was always mm-hmm. going to be Dan. Dan, who thinks he comes because he comes from the sort of upper middle class background or you know, from life of privilege and people are saying his work isn't dark enough. So he decides that his, his life isn't dark enough. So he goes on adventures to try mm. to be darker, which yeah. is why he ends up trying to paint a picture of his mother nude and, you know, things like that. He's trying to explore his darker side. And uh, so there would have been more adventures like that in the TV show. So. Yeah. And then you're but, watching uh, that you're like, dude, no way. <laughs> dude. No yeah. way. And then yes way it's going to go there. And it did. <laughs> it was fun. Mm-hmm. But it was, it, but it was um, to me, would you say this movie, I, it's interesting because I think part of what's great, the characters obviously in, in this whole coming of age thing, but artists, the starving artist motion, but it's the same thing. Like if you did it with writers yet, what was interesting is they still needed their group of friends because art is so solitary, so is writing. Yeah. yeah. Um, mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. solitary. Yet, as, yeah. as a band, yeah. if you did this as a band movie, it would be a little bit different because a band yeah. is a band, and then mm-hmm. then you have all the drama of a band. And I've done that. But the yeah. writing yeah. and the art, the visual art and the, the sculpture, that's a personal process on your own. It, it, that's what I also saw in that is that you you had to have that nucleus of friends, because that is what happens. They and then if they start yeah, they, on each they other's support work, you and they, you know, and you talk to them and you, you know, where it's really successful. I don't, I don't know. You know, I went to film school and mm. uh, I, my experience was more like, wasn't really, the, the people were a little more jealous, jealous of each other. If anyone had success and things, they would sort of, you know, it was a while ago, but, but what I have seen is there are groups that stick together and really support each other and make mm. films together. And they, they have a, a lot of success doing that, you know, produce each other's films and things like that. So, it's nice just to have a group that you can talk about ideas with and, you know, because the stuff talking about art, it can be pretty pretentious and not everybody wants to do that, but, you know, keep yeah. some friends, you can sit in the bar when you're 23 years old and sit and talk mm-hmm. about, you know, your favorite painters and this guy's trying to do something really special and this guy sucks and, you know, whatever, things like that. Yeah. I mean, you know, you really, you, you learn and, and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, it, it helps. And people steal your ideas. Yeah. Hello, Kelsey, oh, yeah. I'll tell you about that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, people steal your ideas, but, you know, that's, uh, that's, yeah, that's, just the way, that's just the way of art, I think, yeah. I, art and business, art and business, that happens. I mean, people yeah. are thieves, and that's that's that wake-up <laughs> call as well about what you do is you don't, you know, when you let things out, when you don't, it's that whole, that's a, a growing up factor in life, you know, of, of do you tell, do you not, yeah. you know. So that's that's another part of it. I think it was a brilliant film. I, I really appreciate it. Yeah. And it, it's out when oh, it's going in Comcast, Dish Network. I'm trying to read all the iTunes, Prime Video, Google Play. Yeah, YouTube. it's all pretty much so, just streaming everywhere. <laughs> so, okay. you know, it's a VOD thing. So it's not, I don't know how much it's going to cost when it comes out, but it shouldn't be too yeah. bad. Yeah, everyone. <laughs> so pangofilms.com. So I know before you were doing Chasing Sleep, Price Check. Um, what's next for you? Uh, I don't know. I just wrote a Western. Oh, cool. cool. I'm trying to send that around. I don't, I don't know if that'll be the next thing, but, uh, and then I was, might write a, another coming of age thing, sort of a high school. Oh, I love set, that. Set in the eighties in high school. Like this could have been an eighties. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This could have been set in the eighties. I felt like, but you know, and I didn't do too much with tech, not, you know, with cell phones and things like that, just because I don't, oh. you know, they don't play very well on, in movies. I don't think, but, uh, but it could have been in the, you know, this, I feel like in the 80s, there was more of a sense of, uh, you know, especially in the art world, there was more of a sense of people, you know, that selling out was really a bad thing. I don't think people think that anymore. I think there's what was a punk era, too? In the art world. 
Mm. This is what we went through. We went from punk and then bubblegum pop and disco. You had David David <laughs> Byrne music at the beginning. I was like, oh, hell yes, I'm in. Like, that was it. <laughs> it was the beginning. That and the chimpanzee. Nancy needs to comment on the chimpanzee. But that, yeah, I that love like, to me, was it. And, and I think the 80s, we had – I. I'm not, I'm just saying there was something about 80s movies and that whole, it's almost like they were, there were a lot of things about friends getting through things together and doing off the wall things. And, and I kind yeah. of, I don't know, it was just the 80s era of movies at the kind of mid to the end of the 80s. There was mm-hmm. something, like I was talking about that with Nancy the other day, mm-hmm. we were like, I like even miss things like Knight Rider. Just this old yeah. school. <laughs> oh no! Right, that this I know that's cheesy. I'm not into David Hasselhoff, and he did not save Germany and Berlin and all that. But um, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not eating that hamburger. Mm-hmm. But 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 there is something about the '80s where I don't know. There's I don't know what it is about '80s movies. And even TV mm. shows like the A Team. Come on, like come on, that was fun stuff. I know, I love the you know what come it on. is? It's you know, they, they, the 80s had the um, they could blend realism with a little out there, you know, mm-hmm. so that it was totally believable. Guy, but it was still <laughs> a little out there, you know. It just, it well, I think like the realism was, happened in the 70s, and then in the 80s, yeah, was when things like, just started to become a little bit more, I don't know, ironic. And, and think, I think, you know, it, people, I think it went If you look at, like, the Africa. sincerity of 70s movies, the, 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 the sincerity of things starts to, like, fade away in the 80s somewhere. Well, the well, 80s, yeah, uh, I mean, look at electronics. It was electronic music that shifted stuff, too. And look at the fashion. Yeah. Look at what we were wearing. Like, look look at it. <laughs> no. Look at the awful. whole thing. Yeah, look at what we <laughs> <you> were wearing. <laughs> Look at it. People forget huh. how bad the 80s styles are. You know? Remember the plastic shoes, More. the pra- plastic bangles that girls wore? like yeah. Shoulder pads. Do- oh, my God. Hair. You just said the worst thing ever. Shoulder pads. <laughs> I'm, I'm wearing the pants. Pad. Like, I've got the Doc Martin mm-hmm. boots. I mean, that. So I stay oh kind of sure. hippie. I stayed that way. But <laughs> the movies, like, yeah, I mean, it, that could have been. It, yeah, it was kind of. Almost say almost fireish in a way, but not like it's still its own. It's its own thing, and those are two different movies. Well, I think also but like I, the uh, you know in the eighties because there was no internet, there was more of a you know we all sort of shared the same you know, the, the same age as you know he's not about the same age as me, but like the uh, we all sort of shared the same pop culture. You know we like yeah. punk or whatever. You know we would hang out with those people, but it was uh, we all sort of had that same experience. And uh, yeah, and I don't think you know. I don't. I think it's more fragmented now. You know, the bands and everything. We don't all have, you know, Madonna to love and hate. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. you're you're really right. I think we've gone mm-hmm. into all these little grouping, the niche markets. We've filtered our own niche market. We've created our own niches, and that's exactly. it. Yeah. There's our little societies everywhere. But the '80s was like we were all in it. All of us were all yeah. in it. Like, what was the new music? What was the new movie? There was this whole culture mm. was at its best. Was it the eighties? Like, yeah. When you think of it, that yeah. that's it. But a western, I want to see that because you've got I that quirky western. side. Is there quirkiness to this? I want to know. There's got to be quirky in the yeah, it's definitely It's definitely quirky. It's it's at the it's set around the Chinese railroad and the not the Chinese oh. the railroad. The, you know, the Chinese. Built the you know basically built the railroad going through the Sierra so, yeah. Nevada's coming from San Francisco mm-hmm. out to to Utah have, where they met the other the other side but it was uh, so it sort of takes place in that world. Have That's you ever awesome. watched Have you ever watched Tiny Town? <gasps> <Maybe. laughs> you mean it's, adventures? It's, is it adventures in Tiny Town? Or no, no, the, uh, it's the terror oh. terror of Tiny Town. It's where they took the terror, terror of Tiny Town. Yeah, yeah, terror of Tiny Town. That's what it is. Yeah. I've seen that, yeah, yeah. You, the, the cast from, from I mean, I don't know if little, I sat and watched the whole movie. The little people, the little people from yeah, the Wizard of Oz yeah. and the Western. Anyway, yeah. you, well, we've watched it all the way through. Sorry. <laughs> 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 like, I that one. How you, that's how warped we are. But, okay, so mm-hmm. when, you, when you wrote paint, just going back to that real quick, when you wrote mm-hmm. paint, like, thinking about it from the artist, what was it that you said, okay, it's going to be art? Did that kind of connect with you? I know we talk about 80s and all that, but in coming of age, but does it connect with you as, you know, putting a, a, a film together? There's screenwriting, there's 
producing, there's making it all happen, there's solitary time in that. And then all of a sudden you have to be yeah. around people to make it. So was that part of your process is and being able to understand from the quiet time that you do your work? Well, you know, I've, I spend most of my time writing. You know, directing doesn't take that long. I mean, we had mm. 18 days to shoot this whole thing. So No way. You know, oh, that's, wow. and then it's a, well, I mean, the, the pilot was four days, and there's some of the pilot is in the is in the movie, and then we had another 14 days to do the rest of it. But the uh, which is sort of standard for this budget. It's like you know, oh, these wow. are low budget. This is a low budget film, but it's it doesn't uh, look like it. You know, it, <laughs> thank you. it's not easy to do. The, you know, it's not easy because huh. you know, getting good actors is hard. You know, really good actors. And getting people on the crew is good. You know, I'm lucky I have. You know, because I'm a little older, I have some friends who will come through for me, you know, and, and work on these things for, you know, not a lot of money, but, you know, who knows. But uh, so as far as, you know, so I spend most of my time writing, you know, and, uh, and uh, hmm. I don't know, like, you know, these characters just came to life really easily for me. I, they're either parts of me, like, I think Dan and Kelsey are a lot like me, and hmm. Quinn is more hmm. like, I mean, more like friends of mine. And, you know, Austin yeah. is people I know, like, I, you know, like I went to, I was at NYU and a year younger than me was Brett Ratner, hmm. who, uh, wow. you, you know, so he has, a, you know, he can't deny his success or anything, but, uh, you know, I don't know if anyone would say, you know, he's this great filmmaker, but, uh, you know, that's the kind of, you know, you see that kind of success and, you know, you can't help but envy these kind of things, you know. I don't know if anybody. But that's this balance. Brett that's that balance. Uh, you can <laughs> have a little bit of talent and stretch it and be really successful if you put your energy into being the success. Or are you going to put yeah. all of your energy into art? It's balancing where your energy is going to go. And the creative process, you oh, know, it's a left-right brain thing. Yeah. It screws with anything yeah. that you're doing to, mm. yeah, to kind of like, okay, well, I'm going to do this, 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 follow this business plan. But then, wait, I've got this brilliant painting coming out of me. Oh, I, the, the ending no. of the movie was so but, damn good. But, his, like, you have his, this flow happening. And then it's but like, sorry. Historically, you have to, the mm-hmm. arts, historically, there were patrons of the arts so that the artist yeah. could just be at one side of the brain and not well, just suddenly yeah. have backwards to do we you know, so now you take. Well, now, I don't think it's that much different now. It's just that you know that there's there's either corporate people paying for the, you know, I, I know yeah. I know it's a business, but you know these films, you know these low budget films are are pretty much financed by people yeah. who have yeah. money that they can spare. And I, I mean, I'm, I'm not counting. I I'm hoping that they're going to make their money back. You know, and I'm pretty sure they will. But so uh, do they, do they, you know, this is do, these are made they, by these are made by patrons more than. It's oh, wow, yeah. But, yeah. So did they tell you, like, change this, change that? No, no, not, really? for, not for this. This is, oh, awesome. this is not the kind of, this is not the kind of budget that, mm-hmm. <laughs> that yeah, yeah, it's not like a, anything. It's a, but, that, yeah. but, that, but that's what I want to say was, what is interesting is having that independence, right? So that's something yeah. that you have to look at, too, as a filmmaker, it's just like in the movie, paint. Yeah. You have to look at the artistic integrity. Okay, where can I go with this? If I give it to so and so here, and they make a movie, they could cut all the character stuff and make them childish and yeah. not who they are. And that's the same yeah, thing true. as what musicians yeah. balance. They have to like, they want to do it on their own, but then that means you have to have you, it's that yeah. balance of do it yourself versus you know want that big record deal or that big film deal, yeah. or that big gallery thing, there's that balance. Yeah. And it's really hard to do. Yeah, I mean, even what we do as independent. It's really hard to hard. balance, and it's really, but I mean, it's, 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 I mean that's, it's very easy to look at those people who are giving advice and guiding artists or whatever, screenplay writers, and saying, like, mm-hmm. you know, that they just get bad ideas. But sometimes you need somebody like that who's actually good at their job. You know, it's one thing they say, like, ah, you know, mm-hmm. well, Kelsey mm-hmm. should be smarter in this, or Kelsey should be you know, whatever, some, mm-hmm. some idea, but, you know, if they, if they can actually look at your script or something and say, you know, what this really needs is, I don't know, some, you know, I, I mean, I don't have the examples, but they, you know, there, there are people like that. Mm-hmm. What was that show? I, I was just watching a documentary on music. It was, you know, the guy who brought up Whitney Houston and he was a oh, producer. Oh, yeah. Clive Davis. Clive Davis. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Clive Davis. Clive Davis. Yeah. And, yeah, uh, you know, I, and he had these ideas of, 
who should have a song when and everything. He knew how to put it together, and you know they couldn't have done that without him. So. You know, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, exactly. it's, it's like you say, it's a balance. It's a balance. But, you know, generally, mm-hmm. yeah. It's like, so when I, when I first started, when I first wrote the first scripts of these, uh, when it was a pilot, and I took it mm-hmm. out to Hollywood, and I had a few meetings with it, but all the meetings were sort of, you know, they were sort of like you're saying, you know, they were, they were like, well, you can't direct this. And uh, which was, hmm. you know, it's fine. It was, it was fine with me. I was ready to not direct the TV show, but it was, but it was the way they were doing it was a little bit annoying or something mm. it was just like they were going to just take this and it's not like i you know I, this is my fifth movie so it's not i've done other yeah. movies it's not like i was not you know and mm. uh but they were just going to take it and give it it wasn't like they were saying like we're going to get somebody great to direct this or, or you know it, it was just sort of like you're just not directing it and uh we're you could just see they're going to try to get some but it's like the staff writer and, the staff writer <laughs> yeah. yeah it's like the yeah. staff yeah yeah how which is which is also listen it's not it it here's the thing there's a place for everybody in it and it's about figuring out the match where's the match and their staff writer needs to have a job and have a place and staff director or whatever yeah. but and it's not knocking it it's just finding your place where you can have the most integrity that you possibly can in your creation right in that way yeah. i think yeah and, well, you try to, and sometimes, you know, two years later, you're like, God, that was what I was fighting for. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you know? I know. Cause things, cause you get older and it's like things, different things matter. You know, it's just, it's funny when you're, when you're that age and you just make mistakes. And, you know, that's why, that's why it's, that's the fun of the movie, I guess, is that they, they're making mistakes. Well, yeah. Based on, based on strong beliefs. Well, Failure leads to success, though. Mistakes that's how you, are, how you learn. That's how you I learn. learn. Yeah. I mean, well, you, you definitely don't have learn. to pay some dues. Yeah, you do because you don't learn until you make a mistake. What are you going right. to learn without making a mistake? You know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, it's true. We have to recognize yeah. that too. And you know, I think it's, it's it's interesting. You know what's happening in film right now and music right now, and everything right now is interesting because it's up for grabs. So yeah. you know. On the one hand, it's a free-for-all. On the other hand, depending on contracts that people may have or may not have signed, you can do your own thing. And the Internet has changed everything. So sometimes doing your own thing might take Mm -hmm. longer, but you might make more money because Mm -hmm. you don't have to give most of it away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah, possibly. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. You know, I've done – I've done – you know, the last four films I did were pretty low budget. And uh, mm-hmm. so, you know, yeah, sometimes that's true. You know, you get your money back. Yeah. And it just yeah. depends. It's just, it's what's really hard is that there's just so much stuff out there that it's hard mm-hmm. to get any attention on anything. You know, if you have a song, I, mean, I hear so many great songs that, you know, mm-hmm. I, I just like, how could this not be a, a hit? But it's like, nobody hears it. Mm-hmm. Oh, and, and record or, yeah. record labels. I mean, I, I we, we interview gazillions of musicians. And mm-hmm. you, yeah. it, 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 and especially now during COVID, it's really hard. And it's, especially theaters, right? At least we have video, video on demand, mm. which is great for you with what you're doing is people can watch it at right. home, right? So I don't think movies yeah. are going away. It's going to be hard about how we do filming now with, you know, masks and, okay, vaccines, all that stuff. But when yeah. you um, look at musicians, they're going through hell. I mean, because it's not mm-hmm. the same. It's like trying to do theater. You the, you feed off of the audience and you have this energy. And to take that away yeah. is like a really hard, hard thing. And so musicians, though, you know, we mm-hmm. it, it this balance of record companies and then there's independent record labels that are pretty cool. And it's like if you don't do social media really well and you haven't had so many uh, sales, then we're yeah. not looking at you. And I've and I I've personally like been in, in the middle of some of those conversations and I'm like, okay, this sucks. I don't I don't because yeah. this band is like the most badass band and what they've done mm-hmm. and they've done so much and yet mm-hmm. and they're really good and I really do know music and I'm going, just <laughs> you know that they're really good and you've said they're really badass, but because they haven't made enough you're not gonna take them on. I call yeah. yes to all of that. And it's like, yeah. 
But that's the thing, like, because there's people like, I guess, like Clive Davis or Davis or, you know, people don't have the patience for that anymore in entertainment, at least as far as the big business goes. It's like it's really what you have right now that they really care about. They don't they don't say, like, well, this record was really great and I'm going to stick by this band, even though this one didn't really perform because the next one's going to be really great. Yeah. And, you know, they, they don't really do that so much anymore. And it's the same with, you know, and I think it's the same as film. Uh, same as film. Yeah. Yeah. books. It's about the balance sheet, not the talent. Yeah. And that's a big mistake yeah. because the more they do that, the more it's all about the balance sheet, the talent will wane. And eventually mm-hmm. nobody's going to want to see what they're saying everybody wants to see. Nobody's going to listen to what they think everybody wants to listen to. And they'll have to start over. They'll have their comeuppance. It's just going to be 20, 30 and years. Yeah. We're stuck with reruns and remakes of things mm-hmm. that were done years ago. And we have to watch mm-hmm. remakes of them. And reruns, yeah. like yeah. Not re- like here's the you know sequels to the the list of sequels is outrageous, <laughs> and then mm-hmm. yeah, that, well that's, that's you know because it's a business now. It just doesn't really have anything to do with with the, the art. With know, the with, art. With the, yeah. yeah. Well, this is this but is you know like I, I don't know something I thought making the film I've I've come to terms a little bit more about some of this stuff, which I guess is you know like it, what you guys are saying is it's very idealistic, and I believe me, I believe I agree a hundred percent, but it's. But part of being yeah. a talent is, is, you know, I mean, you can't be Beyonce without knowing it's not just business. about how great you can sing and dance. It's, it's yeah. you have some to sort have the business. <laughs> she has something. Yeah. She has some sort of ambition or something. You know, I mean, she's obviously she's a superstar, but she's a businesswoman. You, know, you have yeah. you have to have the business smarts. You can't you. It's 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 like a luxury to be able to be really good at something and not be able to make it work to get out there. And yes, yeah. you can be a, a, in the world, the best filmmaker, the best, and maybe mm-hmm. people, you want people to see it. And if it goes out free or not, it's, it's really, you know, art shouldn't even be judged by money. It's like wine. Some bottles are a hundred bucks, mm-hmm. some are 10 bucks. And it, and maybe the hundred dollar bottle is worse than the $10 bottle, whatever. Yeah. So like all of that. Well, there's different tastes too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. Right. Talk. But I think I always now, get you know there's people like uh, I always think this this is an early lesson I learned that uh, somebody like the first film I did Chasing Sleep I remember somebody lo- you know they really liked the film and they were writing about it and then they said at the end of it they said it was the best film since some other film that I hated. Oh. And I was just so le- I was just like oh God, you know if that's their taste but I don't really you know yeah. that wasn't what I was talking about. Well, I just I, feel I don't like know. it just ruined it for me. It's it's and yeah. yeah. Well, that's the hard thing. Even you okay. know, talking about things so, about what you like or not music, and people get like, don't talk about this song about what it makes you feel like. But if you, you it's it's that weird balance of don't be opinionated, but but do. But if art and all of it is subjective. But I think now is the era of independence banding together. We are working on something that we can do that with small. It's small business and creative professionals. Mm-hmm getting together and giving the big finger to the man, but not really, because at the same time we still have to use <laughs> the big man and the big man needs to use us. So it's about actually working together. And I feel like yeah. there's so much of this right now that it, it, the energy of it, the frustration of it, it's, it's going to happen. It's going to turn. The tide is going to I turn. Think, I, I mean, I think, tide, you're, I think you're right. I, it it has to. And it's not way. just in the arts. I think it's in every business, but it's, uh, Small it's business just too much is, consolidation. Yeah, this this year in COVID really taught us something. You know, it, it's it's yeah. like businesses had to change. Whether and and I'm sorry, but uh, filmmaking, art, music, it's all a business. If you make it and you're doing yeah. it professionally to sell an album, you are in business. So yeah. all of it, at the end of the day, is like had to make people like really change what they do. Some people created better business plans and have actually a better story out of it. Some people don't. Some people have gone bankrupt. It's really sad. All of it. But at the end of the day, it's about independence and standing up and uniting and also looking at what can you do. And I think the small business yeah. is we're looking at going, oh, my God, we're, while we're living on Amazon. Great. I mean, it's great. People can get your movie through there. It's great. But we also need to support small business. And I think people are starting to look at it and realize, oh, the small business is actually my neighbor next door to me in their house. Yeah. And we're going to start yeah. looking at that. Well, I think too, with, with to the arts, it. it's like, you know, the small, yeah. these, you know, the, the ideas come from, 
from individuals, since like you're saying, you know, the, the independence, that that's where new mm-hmm. ideas come from. And if you just, if you don't have that feeding into the system, then yeah. you don't have any new ideas, which is part of the problem with, with like you're saying, with the, uh, you know, the mm-hmm. small, everything's a sequel now because they're just recycling the stuff that they have. And there's not a lot of new things that are being fed in because they just get shut up. They can't, they can't really break through this marketplace where, you know, the Avengers are spending $500 million on their advertising. So, so they're basically uh, being a cover band. Basically. Uh, yeah. I guess that's true. At the end of the day, no offense to cover bands, I mean, because <laughs> we all like to hear our music and, and it's actually carrying the torch through in some ways, but mm-hmm. like seriously, like honestly, no. Right. Um, one thing before God, because I know we've kept you longer than we should have, but um, I wanted to address the chimpanzee at the beginning of the movie <laughs> with the painting okay. because this goes like mm-hmm. Nancy and I lost it when we started watching it. We lost <laughs> it because. That's Nancy, good. tell him tell him your story of when you were in art school. <laughs> okay, so um, I had a professor who was very vocal about his opinion on various artworks. And mm-hmm. um, I went to the L.A. Zoo, and they had chimpanzees there, three in one mm-hmm. cage, and they gave them squeeze bottles of paint, and you could buy the prints or a, you know, <laughs> a painting. So, All right. Um, since he was vocal about me being realistic with my paintings, I bought a chimpanzee painting mm-hmm. and I turned it in and he said I had a major breakthrough. <laughs> oh, God. I know. Well, you know, so like, there's yeah. famous, I'm sure you know, it, but there's famous stories about that. There was, you know, there was somebody did that. You know, there's always people trying to shoot down the artists, you know, and yeah. I think as far as I think the, the reason that monkey thing is so funny is because that's really how people see artists. They're like, well, monkey could paint that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they don't oh. really appreciate the kind of the, the stuff that went into it. You know, it's just, when I when I think back to that, I remember spending about 20 minutes picking between the chimp prints. <laughs> what did it matter? But I was like, dude, that's kind of cool. I like that. You know? Yeah, well, you found the good oh, one, my... obviously. You picked, you picked the right one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. And you see the that's chimps fun. paint, and, and they have fun. They mm-hmm. have fun with it. They like it. Right on. <laughs> so I'm, I'm saying good for the chimps and bad oh, for the professor. And yeah, take your degree <laughs> and shove it. Okay. And then you also, in a weird way, had that old school chimp factor in your movie. I'm just saying, the old chimp movie. You remember those? Like the old black and whites with the, yeah. Not saying that we mm-hmm. should be using animals in it, but I'm just saying. No. It harkens back to some of that old crazy stuff. But everyone, go to pangofilms.com. Uh, Paints comes out December 15th on VOD everywhere. So go get it. Go watch it. And uh, it's it, it is funny. Yeah. The more I keep thinking, yeah, thank you, you know so when a movie much. lives thank you so much. when a thank you, Michael. When a movie lives with you all day, the next day, like you keep talking about it, like it's a good movie. I don't care what the budget was; it was good. Awesome actors, the cast is incredible, mm-hmm. and oh. the whole thing was good from start to finish. Should thank you. For, oh, I know. Get it back. Yeah, get it. Get it. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. You take care and happy holidays to you. All right, you too. Take care. Take care. Bye bye. Thanks.